Well, hello. Um, several people have asked me how I went about the process for making this particular card. I, I made it for a blog challenge, which was to use loose watercolouring. Now, basically, that means that it's watercolour that doesn't necessarily stay within the image. And there's loads of ways that you can achieve this loose watercolour um, effect um, with painting by hand or whatever. But what I chose to do for this one was stamping um, with Distress Oxide ink. Now, Distress Oxides react with water, which is why they are deemed watercolours. And there are several ways of achieving the effect. Um, one being that you would dampen the paper first of all and stamp into it so that the ink would react with the damp um, paper and start to bleed, move about. Or you can stamp directly onto dry paper and then spritz it with water. And you can achieve different levels of uh, effect with how much water you use and when. So I thought I would just show you a few of the results. You can have a look and see what happens. Um, as far as distress inks are concerned, I, I haven't got the complete set, but what I've done is um, made a chart so that when I get a new um, ink pad, I will put a, um, a dab onto my chart. So I and I've put them in not in alphabetical order, which is how I've got them stored as um, our actual pads, but in colour family. So I can see what colours I might like to use with each other, so that they're not too far removed. So today um, I've, I'm going to have a, a go with some of the blues. And what I've chosen is um, a chipped sapphire, which is a deep one, prize ribbon. Uh, where's where's chipped sapphire? There it is. Prize ribbon and blueprint sketch. And um, for a, a little bit of interest in the background, I've, I've been playing about with, with stamps and uh, I... I prefer this lighter one. This is um, Stormy Sky. For just a bit of interest in the background, I used... Um, um, if it's, this is an, it's an old stamp. I don't suppose they make it anymore. From Stampin' Up, it's just a grid. A sort of a, a grungy, distressed type grid, uh, which is here. Um, so I think I'll use that. Um, I've got some of the effects of... Um, the the inks here but i will do i'll do them with you this one was stamped onto dry paper and then spritzed this one was stamped onto damp paper this one which i think looks fab fabulous for a background um it was stamped off First of all, after the after the um, stamp was inked, it was stamped off onto some scrap paper, then stamped into damp paper. OK, so let's just put those away for the minute. Here I've got uh, two sorts of paper. This is 90 pound watercolour paper. This is just plain flat, kind of absorbent, regular cardstock. Um, I do tend to try and use this if I can get a reasonable effect rather than a watercolour paper. And the reason is, if I'm going to do something on watercolour paper, I don't make the card from watercolour paper. I make it from regular cardstock. And trying to match the colour of watercolour paper with a cardstock paper is really tricky. There are so many whites and it just grates against me to see them not going together. This, in fact, isn't too bad. 
to put that onto this kind of cardstock wouldn't be that wouldn't offend me too much but um i'll do it on both so you can see if there's much of a different effect from from the two sorts so i'll put two away for the moment and i've got this is the watercolor paper this is the cardstock here is my spritzing bottle there are my inks here is my stamp uh, I think I will just start by doing the um, the stormy sky background and I'll do two I'll do um, one that is onto onto wet paper and one that's onto dry I've got extra bits here to, to do it so we know what we're doing first of all I'll do both of these onto dry paper spritzing afterwards and we'll see if we've got much difference okay so i'll start with the background stamp this is stormy sky onto dry paper okay and this one onto dry watercolour paper. I really ought to keep checking to make sure I can, you can see what I'm doing here. I forget. Sometimes the the um, digital crown on my watch turns and the focus, well, not the focus, the um, the distance, the enlargement changes and I don't realise. So sorry about that if it does happen. So there's my background. Now I've got this little butterfly. This is from a, um, the same set that my card that I showed you uh, at the beginning is from. I used that one. It's penny black. And this is the stripey one. So I thought we'd try a stripey one today. And I'm going to ink with Blueprint Sketch, but I'm just going to kind of put it in the middle part of the, just in the middle, like that. And then I think I'll use the, uh, shall I use the prize ribbon with chip sapphire? Oh, isn't it wonderful when you can't decide? I think I'll use the chip sapphire on the edges. We'll just see how it goes. Okay. This is dry paper again. Okay. I'll do the same for the watercolour uh, paper. Bit of prize ribbon in the middle. Bit of chip sapphire on the edges. And stamp. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, is just spritz them. Now, you don't want to drown them, otherwise you finish up with an incredible mess. So, this is the card, the absorbent dish card. I'm holding it a fair disc. That, here's my spritzer. I'm holding it up fairly high. And spritz. And onto the watercolour paper. Okay, I'll leave those a bit now. Let them move. And I'll, while they're doing that, I'll be stamping onto the damp paper. So I'll put these on one side. I'll come back and show you those in a moment. Right. Here's a piece of watercolour paper. Here's a piece of card. Watercolour, card. And I'm going to spritz them first this time. Okay. Here we go. I don't want the paper swimming, but it needs to be damp. Right. Here we go with the background stamp, first of all, in Stormy Sky. Now I've got to try and get this paper down-ish. Press. Okay. And ink again. It's absolutely personal choice what you do, whether you like it this way or the other way. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if I've put this watercolour paper the right way up. I didn't check. Never mind. We'll see about that later. 
watercolour does have a right side and a wrong side. There we go. That's moving quite a, quite nicely. Right, here we go with the, the butterfly. What did I start with? Blueprint sketch. These pads are really quite juicy and I got it all over my fingers. It's I do love these things. I resisted buying them for so long. I thought, what do I need those for? I've got just about every colour of Distress Ink and I love those. But these are so much more versatile. They're juicier, they're thicker. You can I can even stamp sentiments with them, which is unheard of. Right, here we go. Woo, look at that one. Right. Bit of blueprint sketch. I'm getting very messy. That's what it's all about, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. Right, let's do the... It's moving about quite a bit. Um, now, if you want to, you can speed it up by using a heat tool to dry it off. So let's, I think I'll do that now. I think I'll do it here and I personally think that um, this looks a bit more attractive with lighter colours rather than deeper colours. I, I kind of preferred the, I think it was um, salvaged patina that I used on the, the original one. Let's put these out of the way and then you can have, have a look at the, I need to clean this off before I do some damage with it. There we go, clean that off. Right, let's move these up there and bring back the other two. That is the watercolour paper, that is the card. So there you can see. Now, there's more movement on that because it was wet. Um, again, it would have been different if I hadn't made it quite so wet. This would move a bit more if I spritzed it a bit more. So um, it's kind of suck it and see really and 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 do what pleases you personally. I mean you can you can try several. I just I just what I will do is this this lovely effect of, of um stamping off. I'll do I will do that because I, I just I just love it. I'll do it on this little bit down here. I will spritz it can see what I'm doing. Spritz it. Let's just... This, what have I got here? I've got blueprint sketch on this one. Now I'm going to just stamp off onto a piece of scrap and then... Oh, look at that move. Look at that way. That's a, there's a puddle there, and it's really starting to to go. Absolutely fabulous. So what I would suggest, to be perfectly honest, is just have a go and see what pleases you. Um, you can do it either way. I think part of the um, the trick really is finding stamps that are suitable. You do need stamps that have got a bit of um, a few gaps in them, so that there's space for that colour to move into. If you have quite solid stamps, uh, it's probably not quite so successful. I think actually this butterfly works better than this one because, you know, it's got the, the blobs on it and there's more gaps in between. But look at that, how that's going. That would be fabulous. As a background, that is just superb. And if you put a um, a die cut butterfly or something but and that I think those those please me enormously and this is just 
a bit of scrap card. This is what I, this is the width I get when I make a, a card this size from a piece of A4. I'm left with a strip like that from down the length. And um, I, I use it for bits of die cuts, sentiments, all sorts of things. So there you go. Um, it is fun. It's very interesting to see what happens each time you, you do it. But there you, you can do it either spritz first, stamp and watch it move or stamp onto dry and then spritz. And it's how much water you use. But you do need um, something with a pretty good spray, not one, not one that comes out in great globules, you know. Anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it and have some fun. Thanks for watching.